Hey guys, welcome back. Hello, my friends. We're calling this one 30 questions in under 30 minutes. So buckle up. So this is what we have here. Question number one. I know a lot of people ask questions. They want to know what's going on. There's too many questions to answer. I like to go in detail, but let's keep these short. Let's keep these sweet. Some of these are the hardest questions you might have ever heard. And guess what? To all questions, there's an answer. But a little before I get going on this, when it comes to asking questions, a lot of people ask roof questions. And I say, well, that's a roof question. That one takes a little time to answer because in life there are answers to almost everything. Probably everything. I haven't asked them all, so I can't definitively say but I can tell you that when you ask certain questions without laying a foundation, without putting walls, without getting everything set up, a lot of people ask a roof. And if I just give you the answer, it's like dropping a roof on your head without anything to support it. So I tell people, well, that's a roof question, but people still want to know. Well, if you want to know for the sake of knowing, I can give you all this knowledge, but this is just information. It has to be applied, it has to be lived, so that there becomes a revelation and so that there's transformation in your life where you change. But if you want to hear some of the hardest questions, if you always wondered, at some point we can get into details and describe and go through just, you know, laying good foundations. So I'm just going to drop a lot of roofs on you. Some of these questions you might know the answer to, some of these you might not, some of these you might not agree with. That's your problem, but let me just share. Question number one, are we alone in the universe? No. Is there a God? Yes. What's his name? Jesus. What's the meaning of life? To find it. What are the most important days of your life? The day you are born and the day you find out why. Can I truly find happiness? Yes. Can God do whatever he wants to, whenever he wants to? No. He has limited himself to his word. Am I loved? Absolutely. Why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? Because of people and their choices and their desire not to choose and do the right things. Is it possible to change your future? Yes. You are the sum total of your decisions. So change what you see and what you say and you will end up wherever and whatever you choose to keep your eyes on. How to live in more peace since Peace is a relative term. Center yourself in the present, not in the past or worrying about the future. Number 12, how to unlock your creativity. Turn off sensory input and distractions. Spend more time being bored and exploring your imagination, the door of your subconscious. Subconscious, sometimes another way to say the spirit. It's just that place in your heart and your mind where you have access to. It's just people never tap into it. How to build my faith. Hearing God's word. Reading the Bible. Praying in tongues. Fellowship with God. What are spiritual and practical ways to grow? Prayer, fellowship with God, worship, reading the Bible, speaking God's word, hearing God's word, and collaborating with the Holy Spirit. How do I hear God? How do I hear God's voice? Get to know him. The key is distinguishing the difference between God's voice, your own voice, or just random thoughts that could be not so good 
What does God sound like? God sounds like you. A woman to a woman, or a man to a man. He passes his words through your spirit and floats them up to your mind so it feels like you're talking to yourself, but the wisdom you hear is out of this world. What is the first step, practically, in hearing God? Expect it. Journal it. Journal your dialogue with God daily. Share with others of what you hear or see along the way. Why does one man die and another live? In Luke chapter 13, there's your answer. No intercessor. Some are accidents, some are murder. No intercessor. Is it always God's will to heal? He does not change. We receive the finished product that Jesus gave us access to through the cross. And that would be a yes. How do I build my faith when I pray and nothing happens? Faith comes from hearing God's word, praying in the spirit, or you can just meditate Mark chapter 4, that we are the variable. 21. Do all things work together for the good? A lot of people quote that out of the Bible, and I will say no. Many people say, yes, the Bible says all things work together for the good. You must read the context. The following verses say to those who love God and are called according to this purpose, and to those who spend, because it starts off with, and we know all things will work together for the good, and as a conjunction, you got to read what's ahead of it, what's behind it, and try to figure out what's going on there. Because the verses before that, it talks about a person who gives himself over to praying in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God opens their mind and their understanding, so that no matter what happens, whether good or bad, and we know all things will work together for the good. To that guy who's been praying, and to those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Mammon and money. Is money evil? No. The Bible talks about you cannot serve God and mammon, temporary wealth, the God of this world system. When you choose to pursue mammon, there's two ways to serve mammon. One way is when you're choosing to pursue it aggressively every day you want wealth. And the other way is when God asks you to do something and you can't do it because you don't have the money for it. You still let mammon tell you what you could and could not do for God. So you're still serving mammon when you're broke. A lot of people want to be poor, humble Christians. God's looking for some rich, humble Christians too. It's impossible by man, but God said all things are possible. And he went through the eye of the needle. He dropped off his wealth. And he's showing you that you can walk in this life prosperous and take care of needs and help plenty of people and not live with a poverty mindset. Why don't you be rich and humble instead of being poor and humble and still serving mammon because you can't do what God asked you to do because you're lacking money. Don't let mammon be your God that way. I need more. Do you ever feel like you need more? You need more, you don't have enough in you. God in you is enough. You have everything you need with yourself, within yourself. You don't need more healing. You don't need more anointing. You don't need more anything. Everything that you could possibly ever need is within you. He has planted that within you, and as you spend time with him, that will grow and mature and be rich and productive, both in character, both in wealth, both in friends, and everything else. What does it mean to seek first the kingdom? 
Well, everything that the world seeks for, from death to the grave, wealth, where should we live, where should we eat, where should we be clothed? And he says, well, first you seek first the kingdom of God. And when you do that, then he gives you absolutely everything that the Gentiles, those who do not God, would kill for. So that does not mean to stay poor. When you put God first, and you lay down your life for him, he gives you absolutely everything you could possibly ever need to do your calling. But if you choose to stay poor, and if you do not know that he is your father, and that you're a joint heir with Christ, and that above all things he desires for you to prosper and be in good health, then you just don't know your father, and you just don't know his word. When you get to know him, you can do all things. Twenty-five. What is salvation? A lot of people talk about salvation. What is what is it? What are you saved from? Are you saved from sickness? Are you saved from sin? Are you saved from poverty? What are you saved from? Well, I'm saved. Saved from what? Saved from that fallen state you are in? Saved from all those curses? that came from the effects of sin? You have been saved from all sickness, all poverty, and all sin by faith in Jesus Christ. So if you're still living in it, what did you get saved from? What is repentance? A lot of people don't understand what it means to repent. Repent to me, the way I see it and understand it, is to turn 100 and 80 degrees not just say sorry and you keep living the same lifestyle you are not a sinner you are a son of God so when you believe you can walk it out but if you still think you're a sinner enjoy the sin enjoy that lifestyle of not knowing who God is and not knowing who you are you can't just say sorry sorry we keep making mistakes and saying sorry Stop doing what you're doing, turn 180, and walk the opposite way. That's saying sorry. That's repentance. That's what he's looking for. Not just say sorry and then keep living it. That's, that's a joke. I always tell people, don't be sorry. Be silly. What part of the body can you cut off and it still work on its own? You are the body. And we work together as one and we do our part we are members in the body of Christ and everybody has their part to play you cannot cut yourself off from humanity and expect to live all on your own and do everything you are in a body God wants you to work with people to love people and to do things together not just doing everything on your own how do I redeem the time slow down and knowing what the will of the Lord is. You can read Ephesians and find that in there. When you know his will and you know what he's called you to. And you've spent time with him. You can do more in a Holy Ghost minute. Than people can do in lifetimes. How do I make friends? Where do I get new friends? You want to have friends? You must first become friendly. That's what Proverbs talks about. Read Proverbs and you'll find some interesting things in there. If you're not reaching out, if you're not calling, if you're not attempting and doing your part to be a friend, no wonder you don't have any friends. No wonder no one likes to be with you. Spend time calling people, messaging people, reaching out, listening to them, giving, sharing, not just demanding, but be a friend. Be there for someone. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can. <laughs> How do I get rich? That's a good question. I'm sure everybody's always curious. How about two words? Obey God. If you want to be rich, if you want to be prosperous, if you want to succeed, you can say, how do I know God? How do I 
grow in God. You spend time with Him, you obey Him. Well, how do I obey Him if I don't even know Him? Well, He made Himself knowable when He gave us His Word. Though it was written down by other people, you can still hear and find His words to you in there. His Word is alive. So that's... <laughs> In 15 minutes or so cover all these topics that's why I don't get into too many topics I don't get into too many subjects because we can go in depth about everything and having knowledge isn't what you're looking for it's building a relationship and getting to know the Father when you know him then we can go in detail on any one of these subjects and bring such clarity where that roof when it lands it would fit just so snug and so perfect because you have the foundation, you have the walls up, and you're ready to receive the answer. So whatever answer you're looking for, he has it for you. Spend time with him because this isn't what you're looking for, is it? You're looking for something more rich, something satiating that fills that hunger and fills that void. So thanks for hanging out with me. I don't want to go all 30 minutes. Here's your answers. I hope it helps you, hope it encourages you, I hope it frustrates you, whatever. Keep seeking Him and find everything you need from Him. People are not your answer. God is your answer. We get to help each other, encourage one another, and we always point to Him because He's what you're looking for your whole life. Thanks again. Thanks for being my friend. And we'll see you again on the next one. Bye.